kids, do you guys kick a ball much? Kick a ball? Kick a ball, yeah. Like the jar, I suppose you kick soccer balls and things like that, do you? Or? <laughs> what about, what about even punting a football? I know they're a bit smaller, I think. You guys punt a football a bit or a handful? Yeah. Really? I played hockey for 15 years, so yeah. no, you, don't, you don't get to kick the ball very often in hockey, quite right. Um, no, just, I just think it's, um, if you want to kick the ball, we're talking about technique and that outside, but uh, make up some games, play a bit of force back. We, we play games of we play tennis and that sort of thing, eh? We're kicking the ball. Um, so I'll just quickly tell you, this forwards, Jamie might bloody get upset about the forwards kicking the ball, but um, you can play tennis with a big group here. Just, uh, and so we've got probably too many here to play a game. But say that's. Um, what is that? Here's halfway, here's a 10s, there's a 22s, and so this area here is like the net, or the moat, or whatever you want to call it, and you put half your team in here, that might be all forwards, normally forwards backs, that's the way we like to play it, so all these guys will be over here, and you have two balls, and they kick the ball, they've got to try and land it on the grass in here, or force one of these guys to drop it, and if you drop it, you're out. You go to the side and you keep kicking it and kicking it until one side's got no, no players left. But what involves guys will put bombs up, they'll smash these low scuds that are hard to catch. If you kick it too long, you're out. If you kick it out, you're out. If you drop it, you're out. If you kick it into the moat or the net, you're out. And we only play best of three or something like that. Now you can do it if you've just got smaller numbers, do the same thing, but do it um, in the 15s between 15 and the sideline, or 15 and 5, depending on how many play. Might play two or three side in there, and same rules. But that involves some accurate kicking, and so you're playing the games and a bit of fun, and they're still practicing school. I would do it lots, fellas. <laughs> <laughs> sorry? No, 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 oh, sorry. No, 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 it's a volley. They have to, but someone has to catch it on that field. Um, otherwise, someone's going. Whoever's closest to the ball, so the lands over here by me. Oh, I've got to go, even though I might have been looking over here at this other ball. It's tough luck. Okay, we're um, we're at the most exciting part of the day. It's uh, looking at our team attack stuff, and we're going to talk about some areas. But we're going to focus primarily on the contact area. And why, why is that an important part of the game for us? <coughs> Pardon me? You want to keep the ball. Quite right. Keep the ball. <coughs> Statistically, it's the most common thing that happens, right? Yeah. That's the biggest part of the game. So, obviously, there's more frequency of rucks than there are of anything else put together kickoffs, scrums, lineouts. So, it's an area that we put a lot of focus on our set piece, which is important. But this is an area that you need to really drill because if you get good at this, then uh, you get a chance to put pressure on opposition and so on. We'll talk a bit more about these up. Um, so we're going to talk about just a handful of things. Uh, skill set, handle <coughs> and uh, preference. So what we're talking about here is the type of game you play um, would depend on your skill set. So this is obvious stuff. Um, it may depend on the type of players you got. So the luxury that Jamie and I have is we get to pick players with who we think have a skill set to play a certain way, which suits our game. And maybe some of you guys, sort of the coaches in here, you get these are the only guys who are playing. These um, 18 guys at your high school, your university, or your club, or whatever it is, and um, they've got a, a certain skill set, and you're going to have to grow that to play maybe the game you want to play, so you have to cut things back a little bit uh, and focus on some key areas, perhaps. So the skill set and the type of players you have will dictate the way you play. Um, and for Jamie and I, and that sort of thing, it's, it's more around preference. We, we attack a certain way because that's the way we want our teams to play, and we pick players accordingly. 
Um, I want to talk about attacking mindsets. So, really, uh, I was talking to Cobb outside. We were playing a counter-attack activity, and uh, Cobb got the ball. What happened, Cobb? Immediately kicked it out of a 22. Had three guys outside him, I think one guy to beat. So they could have potentially attacked from there, but I reckon he, he wasn't sure. But I think his mindset was, I'll just fucking kick it to relieve it. You know, relieve pressure and kick it down there and get rid of it. And then hopefully you put pressure on them. And, but what it does, it's false goal. Because you kick it down there and they get to catch it. And now they're in your half and they get to build some pressure. So really, often the best place to attack from maybe five metres out from our line. So I'll, I'll give you an example of this. Uh, oh, shit, now I won't. Yeah, okay, yeah, sorry. So I'll show you what I'll talk about in a second. So when I talk about preference, sorry, this is, this is what, my team's the one in the orange and sky blue. It's not our normal colours, but uh, we were playing for a charity that day. It was, called Y Kids, which is a kids hospital, and that were their colours, and so we put a jersey together and uh, spent a bit of time in the hospital that week and so on and so on. So, um, this is probably an example of how we play. So I'll go to that first, sorry. Um, tell me what you see. Quick ball, you said. Direct running, direct lines. A lot of support. Yeah. So what was it about about support? So a lot of support. Yeah. What what about what about a lot of support? What about that um, the contact area? Yep. Yeah. <coughs> got a quick ruck. How? I'm sorry. How do we get a quick ruck? Yeah. So all those things. <laughs> Um, getting there quickly, eliminating threats was a quality carry. I, I want to go back and just point out something in this clip that what's the, uh, the carries? Carries excellent. So pretty strong set piece. He carries it here. What I want you to look at here is the quality of the work that this guy here does, um, Charlie. So he eliminates the first threat. So we'll look at that. This guy here, he eliminates the tackler who's starting to get up and sort of get in the way and slow our ball down. So he gets low and eliminates him. So I'll show that bit. So he's gone, he's gone. Balls, yeah. Balls available, he's gone. So I don't know if you will notice Liam Messam grabbed Dan Carter, throw him into the post. That was, that was the only other person who could potentially slow that down. So that's a big part of our game in regard to technical excellence. Quality carry over the game line, um, you know, I guess eliminating threats and getting a lightly quick ball off it. Okay, now what I was talking about positive mindset, sorry boys, I put these around the wrong way, but um, I was in Argentina uh, sort of about this time last year and we had a group of 200 coaches and I showed them this picture and I showed it from end on and showed it from wide and um, What's going on? So we showed it from end on, showed it wide. What, this is pretty much on the 22. That, believe it or not, was a scrum. I cut it a bit late. Uh, it was a little bit messy. But what's the score? Down by one. Down by yeah. one. 13 to play, 12 to play, really. Um, we're, we're sort of scrum on our 22. They've got their back three all reasonably deep. They're, and they always do. And they're waiting for you to kick it and then they can bring it back and use their big forwards. So I asked this group of Argentinian coaches, oh, what would you do from here? And I showed them end on, showed them all the space. Um, everyone said kick it. And so I showed them the clip, which I'll show you guys now. So then the wingers push forward. How wing gets the ball, should have passed, or kicked, or anything. <laughs> <laughs> The only thing he did really smart about that was he let the ball go, just as the guy down the sideline. Now, but I want, I want you to watch from here. So this is about attacking mindset. So they've been confident enough to have a crack from deep there, but 
watch his halfback trying to get the ball. Aaron Cruden's in the background waving his arms, trying to get it. Still calling for it. They throw it in because there's no line out form. And then they play off that. There's Aaron ghosting across backs, sunny up the middle, offload. Oh. Now, our final score was 28 and 22. So that was the winning of the game. But really, that came from a scrum down our end where the guys were confident enough to have a crack based on what was in front of them. And like I say, Tix could have done a better job. He could have linked the side, he could have nudged ahead. He reckoned he was thinking about doing both those things, kicking it, he looked over here. By the time he looked up, he'd uh, run into the fullback. But ultimately, from the air, attacking mindset again, got the ball in quickly and played. So uh, that was a massive part of our season last year because if we'd lost that game, we're, we're under the pump um, and would have put the balls in a much stronger position. So, so that, I think that's key. And if coaches, if you want your team to play attacking style of footy, you need to encourage it. And you need to encourage those situations. Of course, they need to have the skill set, I understand that. But if they have a crack from there and they muck it up and you abuse them, they'll never have another crack from there. So you need to basically, if you want them to play attacking footy and you want them to have an attacking mindset, you need to encourage it. Not always going to get it right. So you, you can have a crack at them. If, if they have a crack from there and they muck it up, you can probably say, oh, the application was poor, or the accuracy was poor, but the intention was right, if that's the way you want to play the game. Um, shaping the defence. Uh, Bex, we've talked a little bit about this already. What, what do you think shaping the defence means? Committing the defender. Sorry? Committing the defender. Both Committing the defender. Teams. Yeah, Sorry? Kind of putting the defense where you want them so you can attack them the way you want. Nice, I like that. That's, that's pretty close. So we're doing things to influence the defense, whether it's kicking in behind or whether it's um, having a certain setup and looking how they set up and then us calling something off that, etc. So we're trying to do things that shape the defense. Now, if you have a look at this, this is a scrum, midfield scrum. Um, what we know about this team, the Hurricanes, is TJ Piranara at nine tries to cover both sides. So he'll get in here, but if he thinks we're going this way, we're going right, he will try and run around this side and defend. Sometimes. Just playing. Um, they've got an extra person out here, a midfielder, so that leaves three on this side. I want you to watch the role of our flanker and what he does in here as well, it's pretty important. What do you see there? All right, so Piranara has followed our nine, and our seven's got off just enough to check him to put Aaron a little bit of space. And then watch it play out. Okay. Uh, Aaron gets an offload away, there's about three more rucks and we score. But the key thing is there, uh, shaping the defence, we expected him to go that way, so we run a move, it's going to take <coughs> Perinara across there to open up space on the other side, and the seven understands his role. He's got to get off and do enough to check that opposition seven, to create a bit of space for Aaron to potentially run or kick. And kick was an option too, we could have grubbed it through there, because the fullback also is back and he's following their nine um, as our nine went there. So that's a part of shaping a defence, is what we're talking about. Uh, another example with a kick. So this has gone a couple of phases and a switch back and then just a nudge in behind. So what would that do to the Blues defence next time we're in that sort of similar situation? <laughs> yeah, they may hold someone deeper to worry about a kick. Uh, they may not come up as quick, so it means that we get a chance to maybe go through the hands. So again, it's about shaping the defence. Um, we've grouped a lot of this stuff in together. So, um, ball carrier, contact support, snaking, gain line, lightning quick ball, keeping the ball alive, all nines. There's a lot of jargon in amongst that fellows. Um, we're going to go outside, so we're going to focus on the role of the ball carrier. And uh, we've got a list of things I'll show you quickly. Um, we're going to focus on contact support. So your role 
if, you, if your mate's on his feet or off his feet. Um, game line is what? What does that mean? Yeah, so the line that you start on, after that phase, you're in behind it, so you've got some go forward. And if you do that well, and carry well, and you clean out well, you get lightning quick ball, which we, we call sort of two to three second ball. And if you get lightning quick ball and you've got gain line, there's a good chance you're gonna get them behind them again and get quick ball off that and, and keep applying pressure. So um, it's a big part of our game. We have a real focus on the first two collisions. So if we can strike well and, and clean out and get a quick ruck like you saw on that, that first clip, then we can put him under pressure and um, he scored on that one, but it might have been a situation where he carried and we got another quick ruck and then we played off that. So <coughs> it is, I reckon if you can get that right, coaches, that part of your game right, you can put teams under massive pressure. Um, KBA is keeping the ball alive, so that's offloads, offload off the deck, offloads on the way down, etc, etc. But keeping the ball alive is bloody difficult to deal with. And all nines, what do you reckon that means? Right. Everyone has to play halfback. What, what is, what, give me a situation. Why, why are we saying that? Yeah, so maybe a nine's unavailable. Also, if the ball is moving around the field that fast, it's going to be able to keep up with it. Right. So there's going to be situations where a forward arrives and the ball's available, and he's got two options. There's probably got more than two options, but he can just go sit over the ball and slow it down, or he could play it. So we'd encourage the nines to, uh, so everyone to be a nine, so you play halfback, you pick, you, you just play the ball rather than sitting over it and slowing it down and letting the opposition organise their defence. Um, so I'll just flick through. Um, coaches, you've got a copy of this. So we're going to focus on this outside, guys. Um, so, full carriage role, we'd expect you to be aggressive, evasive, you have low body position. We're going to have leg drive and we're going to accentuate that outside. FT, FTSU is fight to stay up. So, we're trying to pump our legs to stay in the game, uh, try and keep our feet square. Then we will be aggressive in regard to our rip, and we'll talk about that outside. Um, and then we don't think we'll score the try, we'll be trying to land like you score a try and then jack back or crunchy back uh, to present the ball. The key thing around it is just trying to adjust, so when we land on the ground, potentially guys get over the ball. And if we can adjust or flip or roll or place long, then we're going to buy more time to eliminate that threat. Um, here's an example of a skinny VGM. So watch this fella, bit of a goosey, pumping, bit of a fend, Feet square again, pumping, pumping, long place. So that's an outstanding carry in amongst that. Eight, eight, six is, I don't know, 85 kilos or whatever. Uh, but uses a fend well, uses his hips well, pumps his legs. So um, that, that's a good example. For, if a little fella can do that, then everyone should be able to. Um, again, just focus on here. We just play the ball. So if the ball's available, Sonny carries, he cleans, ball's available, Sona Tomalolo picks up. And then penalty. So, same sort of principle. Ball's available, we play it. Um, support role, we're going to do a bit around anticipating and reacting quickly. So, simple terms, snake. Do you know what snake means? I already mentioned it, but do you know what snake means? Yeah, so the guy's on his feet rather than tiptoeing behind and waiting for him to go to ground and place the ball and then having a, a bit of a shit fight with a guy trying to contest, you will latch on. And you can either, some people will snake on that guy or also tackle the tackler. In other words, go beyond him and eliminate the guy who's slowing his progress, allow him to carry on or present the ball quickly. So if they're off their feet, you need to eliminate the threat quickly. Um, eyes up. Bend of the knees, shoulders under the chest, chase feet, um, get the fender off his feet. What, why would that last bit be in there? Get the fender off his feet. Yeah. So what's common in our game is we have people clean out, and they go to clean out, and the guy sort of moves away, 
and we end up with three or four off their feet, and they end up with one maybe the tackler, and everyone else just bounces out and goes to the position. If we can clean out and get their guys off their feet and land on top of them, then we can get back in the game quicker and one less guy to defend. Okay. Um, so here's an example of snaking. So he's pumping his legs, the guy's just trying to get on, trying to eliminate some other threats to allow him to place the ball quickly. This one here, they go to ground, so they should have gone on a little bit quicker probably, uh, but they had to get in and clean. Okay, so we'll do a little bit of that outside. Um, here's a, an example of technical excellence in regard to a low clean out. So you watch this guy, low, pumps legs beyond the ball. Um, and similar with this one. So forward playing the ball, it's available. This guy, one man bullet, one man one bullet, cleans and then space for the nine to pick quickly. So all those, those little things about technical excellence provide opportunities for others. If that was a poor clean out, we have to commit another guy to clean out or whatever, you slow a ball, and so on. So everything I guess is the opposite of what we're talking about when Jamie was promoting the defensive stuff. Uh, finally, it's all about playing. So if we make a break and we get him behind the defence, potentially where's the space? Generally on the other side of the field. Why is that? Sorry? Yeah, because where it's where their defence tend to drift. You now someone makes a break and everyone gravitates towards there to try and stop that. Often the space, not always, sometimes it's going to be down the same side of maybe a short channel. But invariably it's on the other side of the field. So having a what we call breach to width mentality uh, means that if someone breaks, we're trying to look for mismatches or space on the other side. So a breach there. Look at these sharks numbers, we've got massive numbers drifting to there. So there's got to be space out this way. Needs a mismatch on a tight head prop and a winger. So again, having that, well, I guess we talked a little bit about um, unstructured play early on, coaches and structure within that. Uh, it's very much in regard to breach to width. What we're thinking is that if you can get them behind it, get a half breach or a, or a full breach, that we want to play and try and stretch to the defence. Righto, so it's a lot of talk. So what's going to happen outside is uh, we're going to go and we're going to play a bit of rough touch. Anyone know what that is? Oh, we can turn the lights on, please, someone. So, rough touch will be, um, I'll, I'll explain it here because it's very hot outside. The um, force might not realise that, but it's pretty hot out there. Um, so, rough touch is we'll play two games. So, Jamie will referee one game on one half the field, I'll go on the other half the field. and. We'll focus on the ball carrier's role initially. So I find the ball carrier and I've got a ball. Um, if I just run, actually, if one of you guys run. So, you'll expect that. Well, I'm not the attacker. So, what I'd expect is that when this guy gets the ball, he will be evasive and he'll try and step. Okay? And if, if we're not very good at this, then we'll have to go back and do a lot of one on one evasive stuff and so on and so on. So we'll see how that goes. But I think you should pick this concept up quickly. So I need to be evasive and to try and get beyond this guy. What's that? Sorry? Yeah, it's the game line. So if I run straight at him, he gets a chance to put a big shot on me, half of me to look up the board, half of my mates to help out. So using a bit of footwork to get beyond him. So you need to show evasion. Um, we expect to see a low body position. <laughs> So getting our body down to here, we expect to see exaggerated leg drive, so I'm going to ask you to do this. When you get the ball in here, when you get tagged, you're going to fast feet, but you're not really going to go anywhere. What do you reckon that is? Because you wouldn't go anywhere. Sorry? Because you're going, trying to press the drive against somebody. Yeah, so I'm trying to force you to exaggerate that, but we don't want you running 10 metres forward because it's going to stuff the game up. So you pump your legs as you would in contact, and then when you go to ground, you rip to ground and you'll place long. And you need to do all those things right to keep position. Now Jamie and I are nasty buggers, so if you do one of those things even slightly wrong, 
you get in here, your feet end up facing sideways, you go in sideways, turn over. Then the other side gets the play. So we spot an error in that one and then goes back. So we're going to put pressure on you guys for technical excellence in here. Okay? Everything else is like touch. It's a play. Uh, unlimited touches. But that's the first thing. Then we're going to go into, if we do that well and we're happy with how you're doing the ball carrying stuff, uh, then we're going to go into uh, a bit of snake touch, which will be the same thing. I'll use a bit of footwork. I get tagged. That has to be one on each hip. Beautiful. Um, you'll stay in here, and I will give an exaggerated leg drive. He'll just stay in contact with me. I'll probably grab hold of him. And then one of our players have to come in, snake onto me, go beyond, take out the tackler. I go to ground and place long stop. Okay, so we're, my job is to stay on my feet. My support's job is to eliminate the threat. Clear on that? Mm -hmm. So that's called snaking. And then we'll go into clean out touch, which will be, I'll be evasive, I'll go to ground, I'll look to place the ball, we'll get a tackler in. He's going to be on about this position here. We're not trying to throw real low on the ball for now. Uh, it'll get ugly otherwise. So you're getting in this position, and someone has to come through and clean out. It's just like a tackle, really. Clean out, go beyond the ball. Okay? So we've got about eight minutes of each of those. So then we'll make a judgment as to how things are going and what we think we need to focus on. Ideal scenarios, we're going to get into a couple of rotations. So Jamie will take one group with um, snaking and, and trying to be dynamic in that area, and I'll focus on a variety of different cleanup. Okay, the rest will see how we go. Let's talk about last night.